in the previous lectures we have completed with debtors turnover ratio in their collection period debtors velocity creditors turnover ratio payment period and creditors velocity now in this video we will be learning the remaining formulas of this kind that is stock turnover ratio the formula for stock turnover ratio is cost of goods sold that is cogs divided by average stock slash inventory this ratio helps us to understand <clears throat> the time taken for a finished goods bracket stock to get sold higher the turnover ratio <clears throat> higher the stock turnover ratio higher the stock turnover ratio good is the quality <clears throat> of the finished goods but if lower the turnover ratio it indicates vice versa or indicates absolute goods hope this is quite clear then similarly stock period slash stock velocity is equal to 365 days slash 360 days slash 12 months divided by stock turnover ratio i hope now you all are quite eligible to understand the meaning the logic of calculating this ratio as i have already taught you all this so please frame your own if you can't in the future video i'll come back and write but for time being i am giving this as a homework to write it on your own <clears throat> so firstly please pause the video and copy this much now let's see the formulas of return return on equity return on profit as per non return return on capital employed return on total asset so we'll keep the name of this formulas as return formulas or better rate of return formulas okay so let's start first return <coughs> of equity return of equity return on equity whatever you will write like you write it the formula is n pat upon average share or better equity share holders fund in 200 so what does n pat means n pat firstly means net profit after tax and what does equity shareholders fund means let i'll show you equity shareholders fund so what does this means you have to write it on your own i'll just show it from the balance sheet that i have made earlier so if you remember this sources of fund yeah preference share capital is also there we have to exclude this completely then only we'll get equity equity shareholders fund okay 
आई होप दिस इज क्वाइट क्लियर टिल ईयर ओनली नॉट टिल टिल ईयर वी हैव टू एक्सक्लूड बोरोड फंड्स देन ओनली विल गेट द फिगर ओवर ईयर विच वी हैव टू सब्सट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम प्रेफरेंशियल सो यू राइट लाइक दिस ओनर्स फंड लेस ओन इफ यू वॉन्ट आई एम डिक्टेटिंग दिस राइट ईयर ओनर्स फंड माइनस प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल ओनर्स फंड मीन्स दिस फाइनली दिस एंड फिगर ओके आई होप यू ऑल हैव मेड दिस फॉर्मेट ऑफ वर्टिकल बैलेंस शीट इन योर नोट बुक्स सो प्लीज रेफर इट वेन यू आर स्टडिंग ओके आई विल ऑल्सो राइट इट ओवर योर ओनर्स फंड लेस प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल दिस इज क्वाइट क्लियर second return on proprietors fund return on proprietors fund the formula is somewhat similar in the previous formula return on equity we have subtracted preference share capital but over here we don't need to subtract preference share capital directly we have to write average owners fund so i'll show you again <coughs> the vertical format of balance sheet so we have owners fund and as well as it is also known as proprietors fund shareholders fund net worth okay so if in the exam they ask return on proprietors fund other than this they ask return on owners fund return on shareholders fund return on net Net worth return on equity. If they ask return on equity, you have to follow this formula. Other than equity, that's why I've underlined over here. Other than equity, you have to follow this formula. Okay. So complete complete this figure. You have you don't need to subtract preference share capital while calculating this proprietors fund or owners fund, shareholders fund, net worth formula. Okay. I hope this is quite clear. I'll write here. Here, uh, here the proprietors fund, includes preference share capital also. Hope this is quite clear. If you want, you can make your own. Uh, meaning or description right average owners fund is equal to uh, equity share capital plus preference share capital uh, then add reserves and surplus and then less fi- uh, losses and fictitious asset miscellaneous expenses not return up okay if you want you can write that like this okay <clears throat> third formula is return on capital employed so you know what is capital employed here the formula will be ebit upon average capital employed so here ebit means earning before interest and taxes this interest refers to debentures interest okay this you all will be knowing more in detail when i'll be teaching leverage to you all so please don't bother over here just till and let's focus on ratio analysis chapter and we are at almost at the end of this formula session as soon as we complete the formula we'll move on to the practical terms there you will find little bit interesting things because in the practice manual the solvent pattern is little bit different you will find it difficult to apply the formulas and to understand how the formula has been applied so we'll make it simpler over here i give you the solved the solved sums you please copy it down so that it becomes your reference book during your exam okay please write over here your average capital employed will include the formula will be like this for this one it will be like this 
capital employed minus capital work in progress C stands for capital work in progress less NTA non trade investment CWIPL right capital work in progress and NTI stands for non trade investments okay so firstly please pause the video and copy this much this formulas are very easy when we solve the sums huh, and one more important thing this is all percentage please write into 100 please pause the video I hope you all have copied this much. Please pause the video and copy this much. I hope you all have done.